not. Um, and if they are not a candidate for TPA and they have deficit, you can very much expect to see these ancillary referrals. Um, if they have minimal deficit, they still need the referrals, but there's probably not a lot that they're going to do with them. So you're going to see nutritional support, you're going to see uh, physical speech and occupational therapies, and social services potentially for placement. So, so in summary, what is TPA? A clot buster. Why do we give it to the ischemic stroke patient? To save their life. <laughs> well, to open that vessel up and reperfuse the brain. Um, when? What's our window of opportunity? Three hours. Three hours. And door to drug? Sixty. Minutes. Sixty minutes. Excellent. What departments can give it in this hospital? ED and ICU. ED and ICU. Good. What tools do we have for using to calculate? <laughs> we have the slide rule. And we also have the worksheet, exactly. Um, and then monitoring the patient, we're going we're gonna to do continuous monitoring while they're getting the TPA, and then we have a specific monitoring routine post-TPA. All right, any questions? John, in the previous classes, the ICU nurses all seem to mention that um, most of the TPA is given in the ED. Correct. And so if a patient comes to the ED, goes to CAT scan, they'll go back to ED for their drug. Yeah, typically what we've been doing is that they go to their CAT scan and then our physicians continue the care until we've started the TPA and then it's either turned over to the neurologists or the admitting physicians. And then they move up to ICU. And it's, it's perfectly done. okay that if we start that, and there's a couple of things I failed to mention so we'll talk about real quick. If we start that dose of TPA and we, we are in the middle of the dose of TPA and we've got a ready bed to go up to ICU, we can move that patient while the TPA is infusing. There's no problem with that. Um, the thing that I failed to mention was that if we, we, we get that patient, we've gone through the entire thing and now we're at two hours and 55 minutes and we need to start the TPA. Can we start it? Yes, it does not have to be completed in three hours. It has to be started in three hours. So that's the big thing, is that we need to get it started in that window of opportunity. Um, so the other thing that we talked about, I mentioned briefly, was that in one of the studies it said that you cannot transfer the patient from one facility to another facility after the TPA. Um, you have a 24-hour window that you have to keep that patient in this facility. Um, if we, if we put them in the back of an ambulance or a helicopter to transfer them somewhere else, they are at an increased risk for a head bleed, so we cannot transfer those patients. All right? Any other questions? All right. Thanks so much, John. Thank you. I just wanted to make a couple of additions before we stop, and that's to make sure that you know about these two binders. I think we've mentioned the stroke alert binder, which is a bright red label on the side so you can find it in a hurry. And it also is, has on the front um, people with scrubs on, so you'll know this is for the healthcare workers. It's your resource to find out what you need to know because we don't expect you to remember every single detail today. The other resource is the patient education binder. Every patient that comes in with a stroke will receive one of these binders. It's theirs to take home, and that way they have all the education resources in writing. So if you do go in to teach your patient, please review and cover what you can. Find out what they've learned, point it out to the family, the caregivers, and so on. I think that concludes everything for this training. Please um, complete the quiz and return it to your manager and then you will be qualified to take care of stroke patients. Woohoo! <laughs>